Hi, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and this is the next part in our continuing series to learn the two-player game Guild Ball using the kickoff starter set, which was designed and published by Steamforged Games. In the description of this video, you'll find links to the other videos in this series, including the previous one, where we talked about the kicking action. But here, we're going to learn about plays. These are the skills and abilities of your various players, and they come in three different types. Character, Heroic, and Legendary. So let's begin by learning about character plays. You'll find these on the front of a character's profile, with a name and a description explaining the play and its effect. This column, called CST, represents either the cost in influence that must be paid from that model, or, as we see for this play, it may require spending a GB symbol generated from a successful attack. Some plays can even be paid for with either. In this case, Friday can either use two influence or a single GB symbol generated from her playbook. Using this Dirty Knives character play, let's go through a full example of how you would resolve a character play that you paid influence for. First, you must target a model that is within range and line of sight. The range is found under the heading RNG. If listed as a distance in inches, like we see here, it means Friday could target an enemy model whose base is up to 6 inches away and within her line of sight. To see if the play is successful, you must perform a target number test where the number of dice in your pool is equal to the amount of influence required to pay for the effect. So in this case, Friday would start with two dice. Here I've set up Friday, who is going to target Flint with Dirty Knives, and we've put out her two dice as well. When making a character play, the crowding out modifier applies, and this means that you'll lose one die for each enemy model that is engaging you, other than the model that you're targeting with your character play. So in this case, Friday would lose one die because she's within two inches of Mallet's melee zone. The target number that you're trying to achieve with this test is the current defense value of the model that you're targeting. Flint has a defense value of 3 or higher, so after rolling, Friday would want to see a result of 3 or higher in order to succeed with Dirty Knives. Not all character plays have negative effects. Spigot, for example, has a character play that will benefit friendly models. And if the controlling player is targeting a friendly model with a play that costs influence, they may choose to automatically succeed with no target number test required to roll. Also, if a play is triggered not by spending influence, but instead a GB symbol from a playbook result, then no target number test is required. The effect will automatically succeed. For example, let's say Friday was using an attack action against Flint and rolled three successes. This would allow her to choose this GB symbol result from her playbook. This is another way that she can pay for and use the character play Dirty Knives. The range for this, as we saw, is up to 6 inches, so while she could target Flint, the original target of her attack, she could instead choose to target Honor because she is within line of sight and the 6 inch range of this effect. Also, character plays that are paid for with GB symbols are automatically successful. No target number tests are required. So no matter which of these targets she picks, the play will be automatically successful. Now let's go back and look at the other possible values that you'll find under range. For example, if you see an S, that stands for self, meaning that the effect can only target the model that is using it. For example, Harmony here can only use her acrobatic character play to target herself. If the range shows a letter P, that means the effect can only be triggered as a result of a playbook icon and must target the original model of the attack that generated that GB symbol. So Harmony could only target another model with her weak point character play if that was the original model of her attack that generated the GB symbol to pay for it. You'll remember in our previous example when we showed Friday using her dirty knives, she didn't have to limit her target to Flint, the model that she was directly attacking. She was instead able to target Honor, so long as Honor was within her range of 6 inches and line of sight. The next column you'll see is Z-O-N, or Zone. Sometimes, like here, this will have no value, or instead you'll find the letters A-O-E, or the words Pulse or Aura. And we'll look at those in more detail in just a moment. The next value is listed as S-U-S, which represents Sustain. A check mark here means that the effect of this play lasts until the end of the current turn after the end phase. 
If there was an X here instead, it would mean that after the play resolves, it ends immediately. I should point out that plays with sustained effects have tokens in the starter set to place beside models as a reminder that their effects are in play, which is very handy. Finally, we have the OPT column that we saw in a previous video stands for once per turn. A check mark here means that this play may only be used once during a turn, while an X here means that it can be resolved several times during a turn so long as the cost is paid each time. Now let's go back and talk about the three different types of zones. An aura, like you see here, is an effect that is constantly active for the length of its duration, and models within its range are immediately affected by it, including the model that created the aura itself, unless otherwise stated. This commanding aura character play is listed as having a 4-inch range. An aura is measured from the edge of the base of the model that is causing it, out in all directions. So while all three of these models do fall within the aura, the description of the effect states that it only targets friendly models. So Spigot, Friday, and Tapper himself will all gain the benefit, but not Flint. There's also a token included here that we can put beside Tapper as a reminder that the aura is active. While the effect is active, another model that enters that aura will gain the benefit from it as well. None of the models included in this starter set have effects with the pulse zone. But these work exactly like auras, except that its effect resolves only at the moment it is triggered, and then it immediately ends. If a play has a zone showing the letters AOE, that represents an area of effect. This does not target a model, but instead a circular zone on the pitch equal to the diameter listed with that play, three inches in this case. Also take note of the six inch range of this character play. This means to resolve the lob barrel effect, Stave could pick a point anywhere within six inches of the edge of his base that he has line of sight to. So let's say we'll pick the point here that sits sort of between these three characters that are on the pitch. We now need to position a circle template with the three inch diameter of that area of effect. And you'll notice the standard scatter template is also listed as a three inch AOE, so we can use this. You then center the template on any point within the character play's range. It's okay if the template itself extends beyond that point, so long as the center of it is within the range. If the description of the effect applies to models that are hit, and we'll see that here in the description, then you perform the following steps separately for each model with any part of their base within the circular area. So in this case, we have three potential targets. You now gather a dice pool equal to the influence cost of the play, which in this case was two influence. You also apply any applicable bonuses or penalties, then roll attempting to pass a target number test against the target model's current defense. So again, you'd roll separately for each of these models. Plays like this target all models, friendly or enemy, within the area of effect template. But the active player can choose to have friendly models automatically succeed this test without rolling. However, since in this case it would have a negative effect on Spigot, Stave might choose to roll hoping to fail in this lobbed barrel against him. For models you pass the test against, apply the effect of the play. However, for an area of effect character play triggered from GB symbols instead of influence, it will automatically be considered successful and no tests are needed to be rolled. Unlike lobbed barrel, which is not sustained, some area of effects are ongoing, and if so, mark that zone with a suitable template that can stay on the pitch as a reminder of its ongoing effects. Along with character plays, there are also heroic plays, which some models have and will be found on the back of their profile. These will always cost one momentum point and may only be used once per turn and will last, unless otherwise noted, until the end of the turn. Legendary plays are also on the backs of some character profiles, but these have no cost. Instead, they can only be used once per game, even if that model gets the taken out condition and then later returns to the pitch. If they already use their legendary play, they won't be able to use it again once they re-enter play. Also, unless noted, effects from these plays last until the end of the turn. Finally, in this video, let's look at character traits. These are also listed on the backs of a profile, and some are passive, meaning they're always active or they become active when the right conditions occur. 
For example, Tapper's tough hide ability will always reduce damage by one in the indicated circumstances. Other traits are active, meaning the player may choose to use them when the listed conditions are satisfied. For example, at the start of Friday's activation, she may make a two-inch dodge, but she doesn't have to. We should also note that traits may not interrupt another action that is currently resolving. And with that, you now know the rules to plays and traits. In the next video, we'll take a look at new ways to gain and use momentum, as well as the various effects of conditions. But if you have any questions about anything that you saw here, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.